Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from another world, champion of the weak and the oppressed, valiant fighter for truth and justice, who mingles with ordinary men disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for the Daily Planet newspaper. As our story opens today, the huge presses of the Daily Planet are working at top speed. A horrible catastrophe has struck the manufacturing town of Melville, and Terry White, editor of the Planet, has ordered an extra edition of the paper. At the same time, he has instructed Clark Kent and Lois Lane, the Planet star reporters, to hurry to Melville for an eyewitness story of the catastrophe. As their car speeds out of the darkening city, they discuss their assignment together. How long will it take us to get to Melville, Mr. Kent? About an hour. We make good time. Mr. White wired the owner of the factory, a man named Holbein. He's probably expecting us. Poor fellow must be all broken up. What caused the explosion? I didn't get the details. Well, there aren't many details. The explosion occurred in a doll factory and killed 13 employees. That's all we know. What sort of an explosion could wreck a doll factory and take such a terrific toll of life is a mystery to me. Every assignment you go out on seems to have mystery connected with it, Mr. Kent. I sometimes wonder whether you don't manage to create the mystery. What do you mean? Forget it. Not worth discussing, really. Well, how about stepping on it? I'm anxious to get this thing over with and get back to town. Joe. I told you to stay at the factory to keep people from snooping around. I know, Mr. Holbein, but this telegram came and I figured it might be important. You don't have to worry about the factory. Nobody's snooping around. Yeah. Joe. What's the matter, Mr. Holbein? Listen to this telegram. Clark Kent and Lois Lane, Daily Planet reporters, will arrive Melville 8 tonight to get a complete story, factory explosion. Your cooperation will be appreciated. Curry White, editor. Reporters, huh? Well, you'll handle him, okay? Just like you handle the chief of police and them fire inspectors. This is different, Joe. This reporter, Kent. I've read about him. He won't be so easy to handle. No, we can't take any chances with them. Well, they're coming. You can't stop them. We have to stop them. Listen to me. There's no train until 10, so it means they're coming by automobile. You will meet them before they reach the bridge and see that they turn back. Suppose they don't want to turn back. There can be no such thing. You will tell them the road is closed. If that doesn't work, do the next best thing. You mean? I mean accidents can happen. Very serious accidents. I get you. I remember, Joe. They must not reach Melville under any conditions. Under any conditions. Well, you must have taken the wrong road back at that fork, Mr. Kent. We've been riding more than an hour. Oh, I'm sure this is the right road. Are you getting tired? No, just bored. What's that up ahead? Red light? Yeah, someone's waving a lantern in the middle of the road. Now, don't tell me we have to detour. That's all I need to make the trip perfect. Well, I don't see any construction. Hey, what's the trouble? Where are you headed? Melville. We're reporters. Daily Planet. Oh, yeah? Well, you'll have to turn back. Road's closed. Oh, can't we possibly get through? Not a chance, lady. River went over its banks. Road's four feet deep in water. Well, there isn't any water here. You're on a hill, mister. The river's down in the valley. Well, but we've got to get through. We're covering a story, that, that factory explosion in Melville. Nothing to it, mister. Boiler blew up. No story there. Well, then let's turn back. We've wasted enough time. Well, just a minute. Isn't there another road we can take? Nope. This is the only one that goes into Melville. Well, i got to be getting back. Sorry. Well, I don't see the point in sitting here staring into space, Mr. Kent. Turn the car around. Oh, wait. This doesn't look like a hill to me, and I don't see any valley below. All of which proves what? Well, it may prove nothing, but I'll find out soon enough. You stay here. I'll run up ahead and have a look. Clark Kent, you're an obstinate fool. Be back in a minute. She can't see me around that bend. Lucky, too. This looks like a job for Superman. Well... Here goes. So, the road's flooded, is it? Not a drop of water. The river is just where it should be. I thought that man with a lantern was lying. But why? 
What's his purpose in trying to keep us out of Melville? Huh. Wait. Here he comes now. He might not be willing to talk for Clark Kent, but he'll save plenty for Superman. I'll just drop down on the road. Good evening. Hey, what? Hey, where'd you come from? Never mind that. I understand you've been telling people this road is flooded. What's the big idea? Listen, I ain't got time to fool around with no guy in a masquerade costume. Beat it. Not before you answer a few questions. Beat it, I said. Go on before I let you have it. Put that gun back in your pocket. It might go off. That's what it's for. Now, scram. I said put that gun up. Stand back or I'll shoot. Stand back. Go ahead. Shoot. <laughs> Those bullets bounced off my chest and you're lucky they didn't snap back and take your eyes out. Now, it's my turn. Number one, you're getting rid of that gun. No. Oh. Number no. two, you're going to talk or I'll break you apart. I'll go. Oh, who sent you to stop us on the no. road? Nobody, nobody. Oh, you're lying. Oh. Maybe this will loosen your tongue. No. Oh, no. oh, don't. Don't hit me again. Don't. I'll talk. All right. Make it fast. What's behind all this? It ain't my fault, mister. I'm getting paid. Yes. Who's yes. paying you and why? Give me a chance, mister. I'll tell you. Yes. You had your chance and missed it. Now it's too late. Miss Lane is coming up the road. I'm afraid I'll have to put you to sleep. No, no, don't. Sorry. Next time, don't wait so long. Mr. Kent? Mr. Kent? Can't let Lois see me this way. I'll duck behind a bush and change back to Clark Kent again. Mr. Kent, where are you? Why don't you answer? Here I am, Miss Lane. Well, what happened? I heard shots and, and cries for help. Well, that man who stopped us on the road wasn't telling the truth. The road isn't flooded at all. But the shots, I heard two shots. Well, he pulled a gun and fired at me. Fortunately, he missed. We had a fight, and, well, I guess I knocked him out. There he is on the grass at the side of the road. You knocked him out? Well, he sort of ran into my fist. L let's get back to the car. The sooner we reach Melville, the better. Well, what about the man? Oh, he'll come too, all right. Come on. Say, what's this all about, Mr. Kent? I don't know, but it looks like someone's trying to keep us from reaching Melville. Why? That's what I can't explain. Here, get in. Mr. Kent, have you told me everything? Of course. Well, I don't like this at all. Well, whether you like it or not, Miss Lane, you're in for mystery. And unless I miss my guess, plenty of mystery. Hello? Mr. Hobart, this is Joe. Yes? They got through. The reporter. The fellow and the girl, they're heading for Melville. You fool. I told you to stop them. I couldn't. The big guy grabbed me and... Never mind. Now, listen to me. Take the back road and get here before they do. Come to my house. Uh, no, no. Go to the factory and keep watch there, you understand? Yeah, sure. And this time, make no mistakes. Ah, uh, that must be Holbein's doll factory across the street. Not much of it left, is there, Miss Lane? Just one wall standing. Oh, it's terrible. Yes. Nothing but loose bricks. What do you intend doing? Oh, I'll look around. Must be a watchman or a caretaker. You wait here in the car. Just a moment, Mr. Kent. If you think I came along to watch you get a story, you're crazy. Well, go ahead. Mess around in that pile of bricks. I'm going up to interview Mr. Holbein at his home. Come on. Lois, wait. Oh, the silly little fool. Hope she doesn't get into trouble. Oh, well. Might as well look around. Oh, that explosion, whatever it was, certainly wrecked this place. Hello, here comes someone. Watchman, I guess. Oh, no, it's the man who stopped us on the road, the fellow I hit. He recognizes me. Hey, what do you want? Me? Oh, nothing. Just looking around. A terrible explosion. All right, keep walking, mister. Hey, wait a minute. Ain't you the reporter? Reporter? No, no, I'm a traveling salesman. I uh, sell ties. I've got some samples at my hotel if you're interested. Ah, uh, never mind. Keep moving. Yeah, sure. Good night. Boy, that was a close shave. He knew he'd seen me before. I just stuck around the corner here out of sight. Now, off for these clothes. I think it's high time Superman did a little investigating. Something hidden under that pile of bricks, and I have a faint idea it may be a clue to the cause of the explosion. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Up! Up and away! Do you have a cigarette, Mr. Lane? Uh, perhaps a drink? No, thank you, Mr. Holbein. Now, you would love to tell me how the explosion in your doll factory occurred. Oh, yes. Well, it's not easy to talk about, Miss Lane. All those poor people. Well, what caused it? Uh, the boiler. Uh, yes, the boiler in the basement blew up. All of a sudden, Miss Lane, without warning. Oh, it was terrible. 
Were you in the factory at the time, Mr. Holbein? No, no, but it would have been better if I had been. Yes, much better. For 20 years, I've made dolls, pretty dolls, and then comes this. Well, it wasn't your fault, Mr. Holbein. You're not to blame. Well, I think I have enough information. I'll go back and pick up Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent? The telegram had said Mr. Kent was coming. Yes, he stopped off to look at the factory. Probably rummaging through the brick. What? I said he's probably rummaging through the bricks. Oh, he is, is he? Of course, he won't find anything. I'm not so sure about that. Well, Mr. Holbein, what do you mean? If my man Joe doesn't take care of him, maybe he will find something. So in case he does, I think you'd better stay here. Let me by! No, I'll keep you here just in case. And the door's locked, Miss Lane. Don't waste your time. Let me out of here. You can't do this. I can do this and more. Why are you holding me here anyway? Because you come snooping into my business, and I don't like to have people snooping. Well, then you're hiding something. Something about the explosion. Yes, I am hiding something. And if your friend, Mr. Kent, finds out what I'm hiding, you will never leave this house alive. Will Superman find anything in the ruins of the doll factory? And if he does, will it mean death for Lois? How far does Holbein dare go to guard the mystery lurking behind the shattered walls of his doll factory? And what is that mystery? Tune in next time and follow the thrilling story of Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.